my father, uh, his ancestry goes way back to the 15th century. Mm. He had in his possession his grandma, his grandmother's Bible. And on the back pages of the Bible were names and addresses of family members that had left Germany throughout the years. And he wrote to every one of them, begged them to help us out to go to another country to support. And finally, he got one response from an American family member, very, very, very distant cousin, Henry Katz, lived right in Philly in Germantown. And he wrote him back that he would help us come to America. But of course, these things take time. So one day, mom and dad are discussing what country to go into. So while they were rediscussing how to leave and where to go, my dad gets this unexpected phone call from a former classmate. He now owned a travel agency. And he told my father there's a ship going to Cuba and there's room for one person. Somebody had just passed. And he remembered dad and wanted to give him the chance to get out of Kirchheim. So he said, you can go, you know, take the place of this person. And that told me that, he, of course, he wanted to go, but he didn't want to leave my mother and I behind. But my mother insisted because she said, you can help us on the outside better than being stuck with us. So he left. Now, before Dad left, he had to sell our house. And he said there were many people in Kirchheim perfectly willing to buy our home. But the sale didn't go through. The Gestapo was now running Kirchheim, and they wouldn't let the sale through. And the reason was the head of the Gestapo also wanted our house. Mm -hmm. So one day, he gets a, a summons to go to Gestapo headquarters. He went, and they gave him some papers to sign, and he read them through, and he realized they had put so many innuendos in there that the, the house was almost, they were almost giving it away. And so he protested. You know, he said, and they laughed at him. They said, don't sign. But the papers you need to legally leave on the ship you want to go on, we don't sign. Mm -hmm. So, of course, Dad signed, and he left. Now Mom and I were homeless because he's gone. But now we moved to Stuttgart, Mom and I. Mom said she had already paid two tickets on another ship. Obviously, we want to go where my dad is. So now our destination was Cuba. And she bought two tickets, and our ship was going to leave June the 1st, 1939. That's when our ship was supposed to leave. Now, while this was going on, the situation for Jews was getting worse and worse. One day, Mom gets a call from the travel agent that she had purchased the tickets from, and he explained to her that there was a very big ship, a luxurious liner, that was the St. Louis. It had eight decks, which is pretty big, it had two swimming pools, and it, it would hold a 1,000 people, which is a pretty big ship. But the most important thing to my mother was the ship was going to leave May 13th, 1939. Remember, our tickets were for June the 1st. Mm -hmm. The guy wanted to know if she would like to change her tickets, and she said yes. But to me, the interesting thing is when she explained to me that the ship that we were going to take and had paid for June the 1st, never left Germany. So if she, for whatever reason, decided not to transfer, she would have been stuck in Germany. And remember, her whole family's in Germany. So it would almost make sense that a little more time with them might be. But she didn't. She wanted to get out. And so we took the ship in Hamburg, Germany, called the St. Louis. In addition... Every passenger had to buy a, a legal landing certificate, which was more expensive than the passage. The legal landing certificate, it was actually signed by Cuba's Minister for Immigration. The purpose of that, and this is aside from the passage, was so you could legally enter Cuba. That was the purpose of the legal landing certificate, which every passenger bought. You had to in order to get on the ship. So this is the voyage. We're starting right here, Hamburg. We're passing Holland a little bit over Antwerp and so on, all the way Atlantic. We finally reach Havana. May 13th is when we left. We arrived in Cuba May 27th. 
and we had to leave again June the 6th. It was a beautiful ship. You paid for that. I mean, it wasn't cheap. For me, it was like an adventure. My mother, mm -hmm. I was just eight years old. My mother had explained, we're going to a country to be with your dad. So that was the important point to me, you know. So I knew uh, we wanted a ship, but the ship had a big toy room. It had toys, it had books, games. You could play ping pong, you know, that kind of. And do you know how many people on the ship were Jewish? All of them. Everybody? Almost. Well, certainly not the staff. Mm -hmm. And there could have been a few uh, that happened to be Cubans on the ship, mm -hmm. but the majority, the vast majority were Jews. And they went to Cuba for one reason, to escape Germany. Yeah. It was that basic. We arrived in Cuba very early in the morning, somewhere around 5 a.m. We had an early breakfast, and then the loudspeaker beckoned us on deck. And as I looked overboard, I could see my dad. He was in this tiny little rowboat. He was coming toward the ship. He was only allowed a certain, you know, he couldn't get too close. And he was waving at us. Years later, I asked him, how'd you get here so quickly? And he explained, he'd been so anxious to be with us. That was his little family, mom and I, mm -hmm. that he stood vigil on the shore in Havana throughout the entire night. He had paid a Cuban to row him as close to us, you know, as he was allowed to go. And then each day I would say to my mother, when are we getting off the ship? And she would always say, tomorrow. But what actually was happening that I knew nothing about was Cuba refused to allow the passengers off the ship. Now, we were uh, almost a 1,000 people, and we had all purchased a legal landing certificate. But I want to tell you, in 1939, nobody cared what was happening. There was no support. They, they wouldn't let us get off the ship. They, mm -hmm. they wouldn't let us, uh, let us land. Now, here's what... Gustav Schroeder did. He's getting cablegrams from the German government. Bring the ship back, bring the ship back. This is, he had told the passengers, according to my mother, the adults, he'd never bring the ship back to Germany. Now, there were two ships following us. They went back to Germany once they saw that we couldn't land. And it really took me a long time to discover what happened, because you'll never hear about this. What had happened was once they reached Germany, they wouldn't let them back into Germany. What they said was, you lost your citizenship. They were wow. probably killed, but there's nothing on them. There's nothing nothing about the, their story. Our story is popular because Gustav Schroeder made it that way. He mm -hmm. could have, if he had sent us back, you'd never know about it, but he wouldn't go back. So what he did was send cablegrams to the American government. That was the Democratic Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He was president. He never responded. Now, the story itself actually became worldwide news. Newspaper reporters who actually talked to the people on the ship. But in Germany, it was a big pro propaganda film about how buddy, nobody in the world wants the Jews. So it was a really good move for Goebbels. Mm -hmm. It really showed the German government. I personally, this is just an opinion. It's my opinion. But I personally think it gave the world the go-ahead to start with concentration camps. It had to have made the German government, they saw, oh. nobody cares. Everybody knew we put, bought the legal landings in, in good faith, mm -hmm. but nobody cares. So that gave them already the go-ahead, hey, we can do what we want. One day, I'm playing on deck, and I feel the lurching of the ship, and I realize that we're moving. So I panic, and uh, I rush into my mother's cabin, and she's laying on her cot, and she's just sobbing. And so I go up on deck, and I see men and women, and they're crying. Now, again, I'm eight years old, and I mm -hmm. know nothing. I don't know. I know this. I know that my dad's in Cuba and not with us. But I didn't have a clue as to where we were going. But I would have been even more scared if I'd realized the adults had no idea where we were headed. And our captain, my hero, Gustav Schroeder, was frantically trying to find a place for us to go. Meantime, he's still getting these cable grants. He's already been told he lost his job because he didn't, didn't obey orders. He's supposed to bring the ship back and not bring it back. Now, he was young, and he had a young wife and two little cute little girls in Germany. He still said that regardless. 
regardless of what happens to my family, I'll never go back. Finally, there was a Mr. Trooper. There was an organization called the Joint Distribution Committee. It works for uh, Jews and others in distress, and he was able to get to four countries that would take us in. And those four countries were England, Holland, Belgium, and France. Those are the four countries. And of course, the actual tragedy, in my opinion, of the St. Louis was that Holland, Belgium, and France were overrun by Germans. Everyone that went to England was saved. But let me tell you, at the time we went, we didn't know that. People sometimes ask me, how did, because we went to Holland. And I asked my mother, I said, did they tell you you have to go to Holland? And she said, no, here's what happened. She told me, a paper was sent to all the adults and they should put down one, where do you want to go? England, Holland, Belgium, or France. Now I'm not saying that everybody got his choice. I'm only saying that my mother got her choice. She put Holland as number one. She explained to me that Holland's surrounded by water and if there were problems, it would be easy to get out of Holland and other countries. She didn't want to go to Belgium and she was actually afraid. This is 1939, afraid to go to France. She had a good reason because in retrospect, I know of two families from the ship that went to France and ended out in Auschwitz. So anyway, mom and I went to Holland. As we were gliding along the, the coastline in, um, in Holland, there were, there were like a lot of Dutch people. And as we passed, they all clapped and cheered. I never forgot that. 